At Weymouth, more droppings. Fumblings, missings and tarnished dreams. March sees them hanging on in third place in the Doc Martens League, but only by the skin of their teeth. On the 13th, they're at home to Welling, and it's more of the same. Lip readers will be able to gauge manager Steve Claridge's feelings. The supporters are disgruntled, and tonight they'll be at a fans' forum. The chairman hasn't invited the manager. It's an iffy spell, and confidence is fragile. You know, in football, confidence can take a long time to, to acquire, and it can go in an afternoon. And I don't want them, you know, to be exposed to criticism tonight. That's, that's why Steve's not here. I'm expecting a good argument, actually. I'm in fighting mood tonight. I really am. Thanks, everyone, for coming along. Another good turnout. Anyone got a question? All right, uh, where is it all going wrong? <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it it's really has gone pear-shaped, hasn't it? Um, we're on course for our highest league position for 38 years. Um, we have a uh, player manager that we keep getting offers for. Um, it's, it, it's really gone wrong. Um, Ridley works the room like a pro. You know, part politician, part bingo caller. What, they, what we want them to be. We the chairman's a journalist. He tells it like it is. He never promised them a rose garden. Along with the sunshine, you've got to have a little rain sometimes. It hasn't gone wrong yet. It hasn't gone as right as I would like it to go. You know, these things happen. Blips happen. Um, it's happened for us at the wrong time. You know, I'm not going to deny it. We'd like to be four points clear, not four points behind. But if anyone thinks that we're feeling sorry for ourselves, and that we're going to give this up, then they're very much mistaken. It's not just the body that needs to be fit. Football's a mind game. Weymouth must think right to add to this cabinet. They've hired a shrink. Unfortunately, we didn't get a manual for our brain. You buy a mobile phone, you get a manual. You buy a TV, you get a manual. OK, so tonight is about giving them the manual for, for their football brain. Are you worried that their eyes might glaze over in boredom? Not at all. Not at all. They will not be bored. <laughs> After training, the guinea pigs arrive in a cacophony of aftershaves. Ian Ridley has invested in a top expert. This is serious stuff. OK, boys, th thanks for coming. Um, uh, not that you have much choice, to be honest. Where's Scott? Um, this is Jamie Edwards um, from a company called The Trained Brain. Yep. The idea really is, w we know you're all suffering from tired bodies. Um, it's been a long season and we know you've put in a hell of a lot of effort. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's not just about working harder. We know that. Um, not that you can work much harder. You've given everything. And um, sometimes <coughs> it's about working smarter. Evening, lads. How are we feeling? Jamie Edwards is confident. He knows what the average citizen thinks of psychology, but perhaps these players are above average. Got any greats in there? No? What kind of images come to mind when you think of the word psychology? Straight jacket. Straight jacket. What about this? Swinging watches, you know, padded cells. Is he going to sit me down on a couch? Ask me questions like, you know, was mother good to you when you were three years old? <laughs> you know, did you, did you ride a pink bike? That's what people think psychology is. We talk about training the football brain. We don't deal with personality disorder, okay? We deal with performance disorder, okay? Write that down because you're going to need to look at that later, okay? That's a blue pen, that's a black pen, that's a red pen, that's a green pen. All pretty much the same. What's your name? Scott. Scott. What position do you play, Scott? Centre back. Centre back. What's your name? Simon. Simon. Centre back? Yeah. When I get picked. When you get picked. Okay. <coughs> like Scott? Do I like him? No. Are you like Scott? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do like him. Yeah, I do like him. Apart from when he takes your spot. See, you're all pens. No. To me. You've all said you're the same. 
The difference in two athletes is the way they think. Now, just look into your hands. Now, this is mental game technique number one, otherwise known as praying. Okay, if all else fails, okay, resort to this one. Studies show that if your right <coughs> thumb is on top of your left thumb, you are a highly intelligent individual. <laughs> okay. No change, on. No changing. I want you to go. Ridley is thoughtful. Time. He's not a pen. He's a ruler. When you played your in dire need. Worst football. Who was slagging you off? The manager. Manager. Mm. Anybody else? Mm. This manager. It was this one, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Did anybody say Jesus Christ? What am I doing on this pitch? Yeah, you said that. I want you to get good at it. Yeah? Squeeze your fist when you feel that feeling of confidence stronger. Okay? Breathe the way you would breathe if you were totally confident. Say your word out loud. Say it out loud. There you go. There you go. So you guys are a fucking team and you can't say your word in front of each other. How many of you are thinking that you're going to you're going to feel like a tosser in front of your mate because you've you've picked a word? You don't buy beliefs from Tesco's. You don't buy confidence from Tesco's. Manager okay. Steve you Claridge is an old school have a go hero. But he's prepared to give the new fangled head ring. game a whirl. So Steve, how was that? Sorry. How was that? Yeah, it was, it was okay. Mm. Yeah, just, uh, uh, proof will be in the pudding, won't it? You know, I, I think it's something that probably sh might have been a benefit maybe a couple of months ago. You know, you, you wonder how far the, mentally the rot's in, but hopefully we, that can we can arrest that. And, you know, and, and like you say, just you get a different feel about the club anyway today. I don't know why, but you just do, and you know, hopefully that'll help consolidate that feeling. Weymouth are a team transformed by psychology. Passing is now about inner motivation. Tackles are interpersonal encounters. The defence have blamed their parents for everything and achieved closure. And goals. Manager Claridge seals the 3-1 victory over Worcester. In the physio's room, he's exultant, but regretful. At ease, but steamed up. So, Steve, you happy with tonight's result? I'm happy. It's a great result, but uh, I'm also absolutely shell shocked that we can play like that tonight and after the performance we put in Saturday. It just, I can't for the life of me work out. I mean, that's probably why we're at this level. You know, people are at this level because. You know, you don't know what you're getting from one minute to the next. And I, I mean, I, yeah, it's it's a great result, but it's tempered with, you know, feeling that, you know, what what are you going to get next Saturday and what are you going to get next Tuesday? You know, it's so disappointing Saturday, it really was. It wasn't it wasn't even we got beat. I can say I can suffer defeats. I mean, you're going to get beat, but the manner, and then we go and play like that today. I mean, it was just chalk and cheese. Finding the right off-pitch diversion is all important, as is avoiding the wrong one. Some players used to drink to escape the pressure, others gamble, and for some, like Steve Claridge, it became more than just a flutter. After parting with two million quid, he sought help. On March the 18th, he was able to visit the Cheltenham Gold Cup, a freer man. Coming here is a test, and Claridge feels equal to it. For me, it's probably a little bit more serious than it should be, shall we say. Border on addiction, I should imagine. So, uh, yeah, it was a problem at one stage. Uh, I hope it's not anymore, but yeah, it was at one stage. So. I've been all right, I've been good. I've actually packed in for about eight months, believe right? It's the first time I've had a bet coming here. And uh, I know now why I've packed in for eight months. How's it going this stage of the season? Um, things are going at this stage of the season. It's like... Um, same sort of scenarios. If you, if you come here 
and you've just had five winners, and you've co collected all your winnings, plus a little bit more, and put it all on the sixth horse, and the sixth horse has lost. So you've not only lost all that you've had, all your winnings, but you've also lost a bit more as well. Well, that's how the result felt against Welling. You know, we, we, we worked so hard to get where we were, and then we just, I can't say anything other than we just gave it away without, we went down with a whimper. And that, I think, if we're not successful this year, will be the one time when I think that's when we lost the championship. I, don't, it, it, I mean, it's difficult. It doesn't matter what level you, you are, you're at. To go from fifth from bottom to winning the league is is a big ask. It'd be, it'd be a big ask at Sunday League level. It's certainly a big ask at our level. Ours is a tough league. It's a lot tougher than I thought it was. A lot of ex-pros come into it and can't handle it because it's it's a lot better um, ability-wise than they think, and it's certainly very, very physical. So. Tough league. This, this isn't for me, this is for them, all right? I'm not putting a fucking put a tenner on. Tenner on Sam Curran. No, it's their bet. I don't even want it. Number 17. Bro. Ten pair, number 17. We've only won it! Oh, my God! You've won. In Weymouth, they've been acquiring new players left, right and centre half. The manager needs to rest his football brain. Why don't you interview the new boy? Yeah. Ian, that's Christopher. Christopher, that's Ian. Is it Gary or Chris? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 wait. The other lad we signed is Chris. Sorry, good. Yes, yeah. that's the one. Okay, he's just rung me up and said we've just signed Chris and I'm thinking it's... Sorry, Dave. <laughs> so Steve. Right, Chris Don't take the piss. <laughs> Don't take the fucking piss. You know I've made a mistake. What do you think they're ripping the arse out of me for? <laughs> it's Gary! You egg! Chris, what do you think about the whole sort of vibe in the house? It's one? Gary. Where's Chris at? <laughs> I bet he doesn't put that on film. I bet he, I bet he just cuts a yeah, bit there yeah. where he's fucked up. Get it, get it. But you have the yeah. <laughs> Who's eating name? fried egg? Uh, well, Lee Philpot never cleans his fucking plate up, does he? Fried <laughs> eggs. Footballers eating fried eggs. No, they're his own free range. They're from they're from Chloe or Dowie or Zoe so or whatever. Aren't they? Like that ones that were down here. Oh, are they? Fried yeah. eggs. No. Poached eggs. Oh, poached. That's fair enough. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's alright, but you have your fried breakfast, eh? Uh, yeah. yeah. But you have a nice big fried breakfast, which is fine. I've just seen it. Where, where's the wooden spoon? The little thing was over on the drying table. <whistles> it's not. It's in the sink. You're having one this morning. You are, by the way. What do you mean? You've got absolutely nothing right at all. So, Steve, you were saying a second ago about the ups and downs of being a manager. Chris! Yeah. It's Gary. Oh, I've done it again, I? Sorry, even Gary! <laughs> I've just framed him. Uh, I've been sat up by phone for three days this week, trying to get players in. Unbelievable. The house is a sacred place, a temple for men pure in mind and body. Fags aren't allowed. Like all great relationships, the Claridge Ridley marriage is about yin and yang, light and dark, optimism and pessimism. Oh, I'm not. Yes, you are. I oh, don't play up to the camera, all right? No, I'm not. Why are you so? I'm not down, Peter. Charlie. You have been for about a week. I'm not down, Peter. Well, we can do this. I'm not saying we can't. I mean, you. No, you seem to have, everyone seems to have a fucking head in the clouds, that's what I'm saying. No, I'm not saying that at you all. You fucking have, you've given it three weeks ago, we can do this, we're going to win this, we're going to do that. No, I'm not saying we, yeah, we are going to. We've got to have a fucking to. realism pill here. Not Is you and Jenk saying, oh, we're going to win this, I still think we're going to win this? Fucking hell. Fuck, if we don't start defending, we won't win fuck all. I'm trying to be, trying to be honest. 
Oh, yeah, it's alright, it's everyone just saying we're going to win this, we're going to win this, unless we start defending properly and playing properly. We we, we've got to here. win games, it's all very oh, exactly. well. Even after today, if we lock, drew, drew or something, you say, oh, we've got to win six in a row. Well, we're not looking yeah, like yeah, winning six. All, all I get from everyone is, oh, we're going to win this title, we're going to win this. I think we can Four win goals it. away from home in the midweek. I think we can win it. Fuck That's all, all I'm saying. I'm not downbeat. I still, yeah, I, I believe, but I also believe that if we don't, if we don't start defending properly and playing properly, we won't win it. That's all I'm saying. What? Well, that can, no one can argue with you about that. What time are you going? No. Fine. I got to go and write another column, haven't I? It means actually writing. Okay, everywhere I go. Yeah. Jealousy would be a thing. Who'd have thought the Sunday people had so well, much money? Yeah, but you're not asking you to go had, down the front so three o'clock and get kicked to fuck, am I? You go and write your column in your little ivory tower, and I go out there and get head butted, elbow kicked. You know what I mean? Oh, and you, you do that for free, of course, don't you? And you do your column for free, of course, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Exactly. As well as being football types, Ridley and Claridge are both big in the column racing. department. Whenever journos gather together, there's a war of words. He's going to do it at the club? Uh, yeah. There's a bit of peace and quiet. We'll give you there. some peace and quiet. We'll give you some thoughts. Yeah. 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 Just trying to work out what I think. Nuneaton's 4-3 victory over Weymouth is a soggy affair. Ridley and Claridge have lived the dream. Now it's a nightmare. So we're in 4 3 tonight. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's staggering, really. We've played some fantastic attacking football. You know, we've been the better side for most of the game, really. I just don't know how many silly goals we're going to give away. I mean, they're 2 0 up, they've had two attacks. And we've hit the bar, had one cleared off the line, one disallowed. We get it back just before half time. Then we go 3 1 down. And then, you know, we play all the football again, get it to 3 3, looks only one winner. We give away another goal, we're static in defence, we don't react. And it's just a nightmare. This is a silly game, you just think what if, what if, all the time. And I'm sure the other 21 sides in the league are thinking what if. But, you know, you look back to the beginning of the season, the, the draws we've had when we should have won, a couple of defeats when we should have got a point. You know, we should be six, six points better off at least than we are. We don't seem to do draws, you know, we, we go for it. You still enjoying it? Oh yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade a minute of it, um, you know, it keeps you alive, keeps you interested, you know, it's a tantalising game, we've lost tonight, we can still go top Saturday, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a silly, maddening, frustrating and wonderful game and I love it and I bloody hate it. When it comes to the desire to win, there is no difference between humblest and highest. 